So this is the final part of the Corpuscope training DVDs. Um, this one is dealing with burning images to disc, which is something that shouldn't be required to happen very often anymore. The times we can envisage this needing to happen would be should the server fail us and we need to go back to burning discs, or if we need to download an image onto DVD off the server, for instance, for the purposes of something like um, an expert witness report requesting images to be sent to them. So we're going to deal with burning two discs as we always have for the purposes of this DVD because that's the worst case scenario. So in order to do that you would need all of the equipment to burn the discs. This is still going to be kept in the DVD boxes in each suite as it always has been. The equipment in there will be the discs, the envelopes, the sleeves, stickers and the um, tamper-proof bags and the pen which we use to label the discs will be the indelible pens that are used for the forensic samples. So we will need to label two discs. One should be labelled master copy, the second should be labelled copy two. They should both have the client's unique code on them which is used um, to reference their images which we've discussed in previous um, videos is the doctor's initials, the crisis worker's initials and the SARC number and it should also contain the date on which the DVDs were burnt. So the way to burn the actual DVD is to do the master copy first. We would take the master copy over to the colposcope or indeed the laptop in the meeting room um, and this is the screen that you will be on. You'll be on this screen for one of two reasons, either because you've just finished the examination and we've covered that in the um, nuts and bolts to the colposcope video or because you have searched for the image that you have previously stored on the encrypted server and we've covered that in a previous video um, for training also. So you are on this screen, you have checked up here that you have got the correct um, client details and you are happy that these are the images you wish to burn at which point you are going to insert the DVD into the DVD drive. On the colposcopes it's here on the back and on the laptop it's on the side. So we're going to insert the DVD and then we are simply on the screen going to click up here at the top burn disk. At this point you will be asked if you wish to transfer the images and you will simply click transfer. For the purposes of the training video I'm just going to uncheck two of them because otherwise it will take too long but you will leave all of them checked and transfer the images onto the disk. At this point you will be asked for a password. It is very important that the correct password is entered and these can be found in the suites and it must be entered twice and it must match in order for the transfer to take place. You will see then that the pop-up screen asks you for a title and you are simply going to click OK. At this point the transfer should commence and you can see at the top it says burning disk and calibrating. This part can take quite some time because of the size of the files and also because now the colposcopes have to transfer all of the encryption data also. It will count down on the screen as to how long is remaining. Um, it may take some time longer than that and if it does it's a good time for the doctor to be completing their tasks and also for the crisis worker to be starting things such as cleaning in the suite. While that's going on, we could go back and look at how the DVDs could be packaged. Once the DVD is actually burnt, it will simply pop out of the DVD drive. So we can now imagine that we have two discs burnt. The second disc, it should be said, would be burnt in exactly the same way as the first disc that we've just gone through. So the way that each disc should now be packaged 
is as follows. I will do it only once for the purposes of the training video, but we would package each disc exactly the same. We take the disc that has been burnt, we put it into the plastic sleeve. We put the plastic sleeve into the tamper-proof bag. We seal the tamper-proof bag and fold it. Where the fold meets, a label is attached and this shows that it's not been opened. On the master copy, we would write master. On the second copy, we would write copy two. We would sign it and we would date it. This disc, as we've already said, will be bagged in exactly the same way. And then both of the bagged discs are going to be placed into this white envelope. The white envelope will be labelled as such. On the front, it will have the details of which colposcope the images were obtained on. It will once again have the client's unique code on the front. And on the back, it will have the doctor's initials, the date the images were obtained and the age of the client. The reason for this will become clear shortly. Those discs in the envelope are now to be taken to storage. All DVDs should be placed immediately in storage. The key for the DVD file cabinets is in admin. The codes for the doors that you will need to get through to get the DVD file cabinets are located in the DVD burning box and also in the crisis worker manual. Go to admin with the envelope at the end of the case and collect the key for the current DVD storage cabinet. Take with you the codes for the doors and enter into the DVD storage room. Open the cabinet and store the DVD in the correct place. All DVDs are stored in order of SARC number, which you will have with you. Once you have placed the DVD in the file, lock the cabinet and then complete the book which lays on top of the current filing cabinet that is in use. The information that you will need for that is on the envelope. It is the SARC number, the age of the client, the exam date, the doctor's initials, whether or not it is needed for peer review and the number of discs that have been burnt. And that is how to store and burn the DVD.